Hi, I am Melanie Lindbier Machado Guichon, and I'm one of the editors of the book talking about global inequality. I'm sitting here today with Tanya Lee, who wrote an exciting essay as part of our uh, edited volume. Tanya Lee is a professor of anthropology at the University of Toronto, and she works on topics such as land, labor, class, capitalism, development, resources, and indigeneity, with a particular focus on Indonesia. So Tanya, in your contribution, you write that you uh, grew up in the UK in the 1960s and that in 1975, you moved to Singapore with your parents. You continue by describing that you had a personal encounter with global inequality in 1977 at the age of 17 when you were spending a night in uh, Mumbai due to a flight delay. You emphasize that this personal experience stayed with you as you were struck by the reality of global inequality. So I'd like to ask you if you could please uh, describe this experience to us. Okay, well, thank you, Melanie, for the invitation. So I had been living in Asia for a couple of years. I had traveled around Malaysia and Indonesia with my high school friends. So I was not a stranger to diversity or to, you know, people living in different kinds of houses, eating different kinds of food. Like I was not completely naive, but I was really struck on this trip late at night from the airport to the hotel by um, whole families living in drain pipes, you know, there by the side of the road with little tiny candles or oil lamps and children sleeping on cardboard covered in flies, you know, covered in rags. It was, a, to me, a really shocking picture because it wasn't just people living different lives. It was people living lives which were, from my point of view, and I'm sure from their point of view, completely unacceptable. You know, just like a shocking level of destitution. And so I hadn't seen that in my travels around Malaysia and Indonesia. I'd seen sort of, you know, ordinary diversity, ordinary poverty, but not this this shocking level of abandonment and the effect it had on me I would say is kind of effective you know that you know I'm quite a sort of academic quite nerdy like I I study things but at that age and I think I hope still today you know some things actually affect you like they give you like a visceral like feeling it's like something is not right here there's something has happened here like this is just not normal this is not a normal way for people to live and the effect was, you know, at first it stayed with me. I remember that image to this day. But also it made me, it didn't make me think, oh, I have to go out and, and help them. It was more, I have to try to understand what happened here. I can't just, it has a history. Something happened to these people. This is not normal. This is weird. This is absolutely strange. And that's something I have to figure out. I can't just drive by this and say, ah, oh, well, so it is. People live in drain pipes, you know, not, not something I could do then or now. So I guess what I was sort of trying to highlight in that opening part of my contribution was, you know, the importance of affect, of actually feeling it in a way that stays with you and you actually can't put it aside. Yeah, yeah. And I'd, I'd like to to pick up a little bit on that because because you also underline in your essay that this experience in Mumbai brought with it some questions, as you're, you're also um, highlighting or you were highlighting um, earlier, which continue to drive your research today, you're also saying. Uh, you mentioned two specific questions. Um, how does inequality happen, as you also said? And how does consigning people to live in drain pipes become normalized? You also hinted at that. Um, and drawing on anthropology, your home discipline, um, you write in the essay as well that a fruitful way to explore and, and study such questions is, for example, by making the strange familiar and the familiar strange. And could you please tell us a little bit more about what this means and, and entails? Right. So in a way, you know, that shock on the airport road, uh, it wasn't something familiar to me, but I found it absolutely strange. And so it kind of had a natural estrangement. But I think we are, um, 
you know, on an everyday basis, we become kind of accustomed to the way things are. Shocking levels of inequality, both in my own home city, Toronto, globally. And so we have to have devices to continue to remind us that nothing about this is normal or inevitable or natural or just the way things are. It has a history. It has social processes, political processes that have made it so. So, you know, it drew me towards the history, like how did this come to be? Never to just take it in the present at face value, but also towards um, the question of normalization. I mean, I think that's the my definition of ideology uh, is any sort of discourse which makes inequality seem natural. So whether this is a gendered ideology, you know, women are naturally inferior, whether it's a racial ideology, whatever it is, like we're surrounded by ideological formations which try to tell us that inequality is natural for this and this and this reason, whether it's genetics or whether it's you know, uh, preference or, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we're told this is just how it is. So as I tell my students, every time you hear some justification for inequality, you're on the terrain of ideology, guys. Like, so you've got to study it. You've got to figure out how is this inequality being made to seem natural and normal what is the line of argument being used here, presented to you to convince you that this is just how it naturally is? And then you've got to deconstruct it, right? Because that's the terrain you're on. So it's sort of always been part of my teaching. It's part of the way I live as well. And so this, these two things of like, how did it happen and how does it become normal lead towards kind of, you know, research and personal agendas, which means taking an interest in sort of histories and causes, but also in the specific ways in which we're educated to um, to take these things at face value. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, answering these two questions and for also offering uh, a peek into what interested readers can encounter in uh, the book talking about global inequality. Okay, thanks, Molly. It's been fun to be involved in this project. Best of luck. Bye.